I love tacos and I love cake. I'm Huiwen from Coco Belly Cakes and I'm going to show you how I made this giant taco cake. I started by making my favorite chocolate cake in two 15 inch lasagna pans. I wanted to make this taco ridiculously large and these were the biggest pans that I had. The template here will be an 18 inch semicircle with the ends cut off. Again, I'm trying to make this as big as I can with the amount of cake that I have. And it won't matter that the cake is missing those ends because I'm going to be adding some meat to the sides to fill up that gap anyway. And I'm saving these scraps to use for the meat. The cake layers are filled with chocolate ganache using my new 13 inch spatula. I've been making cakes for about 10 years now and I can't believe I didn't get this bigger spatula till now. It makes things go so much faster. Once the top and sides are covered with ganache, put the cake in the fridge to firm up. Then we have to flip this thing over to ganache that other side. Once that's done, chill it again till it gets nice and firm. Prepping the fondant for the taco shell took me back to 6th grade art class with Mrs. Grushkin. What I'm doing here is wedging the fondant to get out the air bubbles. Potters do this to clay, so I figured I'd try it with fondant and it actually worked pretty well. I rolled out the fondant from one half of the shell, then added texture with some crumpled foil. After spritzing water on the ganache, I draped on the fondant and then I'm going to cut off the excess. Then we have to flip this thing over so the fondant can lay flat as it dries out. You'll see what I mean. This thing is getting heavier and heavier, so flipping it is going to be super awkward. The entire cake actually ended up weighing 14.6 pounds, so flipping it and carrying it in and out of the fridge was definitely a workout. Once it's flipped, I attach the shell to the bottom of the taco, then put it back in the fridge to chill again. This is going to make the fondant firmer and easier to cut cleanly. I made the semicircle template that I used to cut the final shape of that shell. Then we add the other side of the shell, then flip it, chill it, trim it, do the same thing. You'll trim off the excess on the bottom and just try to join the seams together. And it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because the cake is going to be sitting on that side and no one is ever going to see it. Once the cake is cold again, do that final trim of that shell using the same template and remove the excess. Now to work on the details. The lettuce is made out of wafer paper. Add green gel color to water and paint both sides of the paper and lay it over plastic. Let the lettuce dry overnight or dry it in an oven set to warm to speed up the process. Then shred it with scissors to get your shredded lettuce. So I always decorate my cake boards. I find that this detail really helps to pull the theme together and makes my cake look a lot more professional. For this cake, I covered the board with Taco Bell taco wrappers. I went to Taco Bell, ordered a party pack, and asked them nicely for some clean sheets of taco paper. See how that looks better than just a plain piece of cardboard and it looks like a giant taco you could possibly maybe have bought from Taco Bell? For the brown speckles in the shell, we're going to use crushed brownie brittle. In my realistic regular size taco cake video, I kneaded the brownie bits directly into the shell. For this one, I'm adding the speckles after the fact. I'm painting with vodka and a small amount of brown gel color mixed in. This is going to help bring out the taco shell texture and help the brownie bits stick. So we're going to paint all over the sides and the top and don't forget to do the inside and then add the speckles everywhere. This part was really relaxing because I got to sit down and not flip anything or carry anything and just sort of got the zone out. For the meat, I wanted to lighten up the color of the chocolate cake scraps. I mixed some salted caramel candy melts with chocolate chips. I had to be careful that the meat didn't end up looking like poop colored. Then I mixed in the cake scraps and crumbled them up. The cheese is just modeling chocolate dyed cheese colored. You can buy modeling chocolate or make it yourself. I have a video about it also on my channel. The modeling chocolate is rolled out and cut into thin strips like shredded cheese. Now we get to assemble the taco. First take the meat and stick that onto the sides towards the bottom where meat goes in a taco. To help the lettuce stick to the cake, I used stoff and ganache as glue. The ganache that's already on the cake is really firm and it's hard to stick anything to it. Then to stick lettuce to lettuce, I used a tiny bit of water. Water makes wafer paper tacky and it also helps to soften it a little bit so you can bend the lettuce where you need to. I love lettuce on my crunchy tacos, so I'm just gonna keep putting a bunch on here. Once you have enough lettuce, then add your cheese. I could have stopped there, but I had to give the paper a few crumples to make it look lived in. Then toss some extra cheese on the paper because you know every time you open a taco, a quarter of the toppings are spilled out already. Then added some random lettuce glued down with piping gel because I know this cake was going to be outside and I didn't want lettuce flying away. And now I'm calling it done. A giant 18 inch, 14.6 pound beef taco cake. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to see more fun cake projects and tutorials or leave a comment, thumbs up, or share this video to help others find my channel. Until next time, happy caking!